This is Scott. This is Rebecca. Welcome to Hardy Party of Five and a Half. It's kind of like a variety show. That's right. A smile for your ears. So keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times and let's see where this roller coaster takes us. It's time to make history fun again. Party, party of five and a half presents This Month in History. Well, hello, Rebecca Hardy. Hi, Scott. How's it going? It's going great. Are you ready for This Month in History? I am ready for This Month in History. Well, this month we're switching it up once again. Once again. Yes. Keeping us on our toes. That's right. Our birthday toes. That's right. We're doing January birthdays this time. January birthdays. <laughs> Who has a January birthday that we know? Um, I have a whole list of them. Well, not famous people, but like people we know. Um, my dad was born in January. My brother was born in January. Which brother? Mark. Oh, okay. Heather Moran was born in January. Yeah. Yeah, we got we know some people. Yeah. I, do you want me to check my Facebook? I can probably <laughs> find some more. <laughs> no. <laughs> Shout out to the January birthdays. Shout out. Um yo 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 yo. Um what we're doing this month is these are famous birthdays, of course, in January. Okay. Normally we do three historical events that were within our lifetime right between 1970 and now but this time it could be any year oh wait what we have opened it up to anyone and everyone so that has a birthday out. <laughs> so we're gonna have three birthdays oh just three okay right. okay and i'm gonna give you three clues for each and then an audio clue All and right. then you're gonna try to tell me who it is this sounds so easy and honestly. the listening audience is gonna play along how can i not get these right i think you got this okay I know all these people, right? You're not trying to throw well, you, you don't know them personally. Well, I mean, but I've heard their names. Yes, you've heard all of these names. Because sometimes you, you drop things that I don't know people's <laughs> names. and These are all obscure. household names. Household names. Yes. Our children know their names? Probably, maybe our children don't know their names. Okay. Not all of them. That helps me. These are all clues. They know who they are. They may not know their names. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Are you ready for your first January birthday? I am ready. Okay, here we go. Here are your three clues. For now, I'm just going to tell you the day they were born. I'm not going to give you the year yet. Okay. It's January 17th. Does that help? Nope. Nope. Not at okay, all. Do, would you like your three clues? Sure. Okay, this person is older than sliced bread. Literally? Literally. <laughs> okay. Okay, the second clue is they have plenty of secret passwords secret passwords right okay and the third clue is this person is a friend to many mm. before i play the audio clue can you tell me who it is yes you get extra points this is it's like five hundred thousand points if you get it without the audio yeah okay who do you think it is woody i'm just kidding it's not woody you got a friend woody who oh um. <laughs> okay <laughs> I'm like, Woody Harrelson? No. <laughs> um, this is Betty White. You think it's Betty White? Yeah. Rebecca Hardy? You just earned yourself 500,000 points. 500,000? <laughs> yes, it is Betty White. Oh, <laughs> she just passed away. I know. That was so sad. Kind of sad. Yeah. Would you like to hear the audio clip? Of anyways? course, yes, totally. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> got a little high for me right there for okay minute. it's way too high for me so there you go that is the theme to the golden girls and you know she was the oldest and then they all have already all, they passed they've already along passed if you away. look at it they passed it a long time before yeah she and she was the oldest of all of them i know well wait we, was she older than the little old lady i think so she was the oldest right i believe so yeah okay 
Okay. Of course, she was one of the Golden Girls. Mm-hmm. Do you know when she was born? Well, she was about to have her 100th birthday. Right? I don't do math. Oh, 1922. 22. In Oak Park, Illinois. Okay. She was an only child, and her parents... Her dad was a traveling salesman and electrical engineer, and her mom was a homemaker. Um, they moved to Los Angeles during the Great Depression. And they went camping in the Sierra Nevadas uh, like once a year. Mm-hmm. So that's where she got her love of animals. She said her family ended up having, at one point, they had 26 dogs. What? <laughs> yeah. Because she's famous for like being a pet advocate and animal advocate. I did not know that. Oh, yeah. I didn't know she was a pet advocate. We had a ton of cats one time. And, but I think that was by different. accident, though. It was by accident. And yeah. honestly, cats go out and eat field mice and stuff. This You had to feed these dogs. Mm-hmm. This is expensive. Vet that, bills. We have two dogs. I have no idea how they handled 26 no, dogs. No, that is a lot of poo. <laughs> That's a lot of poopa scooping, isn't it? I was gonna say a lot of poopa scooping. Oh man. Okay, as a child, she dreamed about being. She wanted to be a forest ranger, which ties in with the animals and the outdoors, okay. or a writer. Okay. But she fell in love with performing when she w- took the lead in the high school senior play that she wrote in high school. She wrote it. Yeah. Because she liked to write. Yep. So she starred in that, and that kind of started her on her way to. That's so cool. Wanted to be a performer. I saw a picture of her when she was younger. She's very pretty. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's so just, cool. She's one of those people that always was old. I'm not saying that badly. <laughs> she was very she was always very attractive. But you would n- you can't even picture her being younger. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Does that make sense? Somebody's going to say that about us one day. Oh yeah. When they <laughs> when they meet us when they're when we're 70. Probably like our great-grandchildren. Yeah. They were always old. <laughs> But, I mean, it's weird to see young pictures of her. Yeah. Because we're so used to, I mean, from the 80s on, she kind of had the same look. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting. It is, because she just, oh, yeah. It doesn't even look like the same same. person. No. Yeah. It it didn't. So she skipped college after high school and began performing on the radio. And before she started her acting career, she got married twice. Oh, okay. (laughs) She got married first to Dick Barker, who was a World War II pilot. Um, That only lasted a few months. Um, once he took her home to an Ohio chicken farm, that's where they were going to live. <laughs> so I guess this, she didn't appreciate that. Wow. They didn't have this conversation before they got married? Uh, maybe. I guess not. All right. So Make a list. Questions to ask. Yep. And then in 47, she married an agent called Lane Allen, but he wanted her to give up showbiz. What? So by 1949, that marriage had ended as well. She's like, nope. Yep. So she I be- think she made the right choice. <laughs> well, definitely for her career. For her no career, doubt. yeah. yeah. Um, she became the co-host with Al Jarvis on his daily variety show called Hollywood on Television in huh. Los Angeles. Never heard of it. In 1949. After he left the show in 52, she had to host by herself. Get what she had to do. She was working five and a half hours of live ad-lib TV six days a week wow. for four years. So that would be like us doing a podcast for five and a half hours a day, I don't and just think coming up wants to hear that. <laughs> and coming up with things to talk about. I can't even imagine how hard that was. No, but we might be better at this in a few weeks when we take our four day weekend class. Oh yeah, we're taking a four day weekend. Comedy. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't know what that is, you need to go listen to our Dave Wilk episode, which yeah. is a few episodes back. But we're taking an improvisational comedy. Once we do that, I mean, we could probably talk. Oh, for we can do it all day. <laughs> one day. I can do this all day, as Captain America would say. I got one day, five hours. I'm. You the can other do five six... hours straight. I don't know. Yeah. That's so, a long time. I can't like, even. Yeah. A, it sounds like a bladder issue <laughs> to me. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think of it that way. When did Betty White go pee? I don't know. I was just thinking of maybe she did it on the commercial breaks. Oh, that's. I was just thinking out of running out of things to say. I wasn't thinking about running to the bathroom. Oh no, I definitely am hmm. thinking about running to the bathroom. My mouth can go nonstop. Yeah, <laughs> that's the truth. No, I'm kidding. That's a joke. Okay, <laughs> on with Betty White's uh, life. Uh, this is your life, Betty White. <laughs> Her first sitcom was called Life with Elizabeth, and that started in 52. Um, Then uh, she appeared on celebrity daytime game shows, and this is where her life turned. Her life really changed as she was on the game show Password. Password. 
and it was hosted by Alan London. And he was a widow with three children, and she first appeared on that show in 61. By 63, he had asked her to marry him. Huh. And it took her a minute. She didn't, it took her a long time to actually say yes. Really? Yep. Um, and she never had any children of her own, right? No. Uh, so this was her, she had three stepchildren. Stepchildren, yep. Huh. Um, she said, the secret to our marriage was enthusiasm. When I knew Alan was coming home, I would freshen my makeup up and put on a new blouse. Wow. So, That's... hey, there you go. Wow. Uh, her husband died. Alan died in uh, 81 of stomach cancer. Oh. And she never remarried. Huh. Like the love she of got, her life. She got tired of freshening it up is what <laughs> happened here. <laughs> She's like, I'm just going to stay in my sweats. I'm good. <laughs> Um, and then a lot of us know that she was on the Mary Tyler Moore show in the 70s. I did not know that. Um, you didn't know she was on Mary Tyler Moore show? Nope. Oh, that's the first place I remember seeing her. Wow. Like in the mid-70s. Nope. I just remember her on the Golden Girls. Okay. Well, and that's what ended up happening in, happening in 1985. She got on the Golden Girls. That lasted from 85 to 92. That's it? Yep. Wow. I felt like that show was on forever and ever. That's a long time for a TV show. Okay. Before you start jumping the shark and your episodes get weird. Um, She was Rose, of course, and she would would have these crazy, like, stories she would tell. In Um, real life or on the show? No, on the show. Rose would tell, like, these random off-the-wall stories. Yeah, yeah. So I have a little sample for you. Please share. Okay. This is pretty funny. And this is Betty White at her best. Oh, all right, I have had it. Thanks to all this constant bickering, I have a splitting headache. Oh, girls, let's face facts. The three of us just can't agree on anything. I mean, it is obvious we were not meant to live together. I hate to agree with you, but I think you're right. I think so, too. In fact, I know so. This is exactly what happened during the Great Herring War. <laughs> The Great Herring War? Yes, between the Lindstroms and the Johanssons. Oh, that Great Herring War. (laughs) The two families controlled the most fertile herring waters off the coast of Norway, so naturally it seemed like it would be in their best interest to band together. Oh, boy, was that a mistake. You see, they couldn't agree on what to do with the herring. Oh, well, that's understandable. I mean, the possibilities are overwhelming. (laughs) Exactly. The Johansons wanted to pickle the herring, and the Lindstroms wanted to train him for the circus. <laughs> Weren't they kind of hard to see riding on the elephants? <laughs> oh, not that kind of circus. It, a herring circus. Sort of like SeaWorld, uh, only smaller. <laughs> much, much smaller. <laughs> but bigger than a flea circus. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me, Rose. Um... Did they ever shoot a herring out of a cannon? (laughs) Only once. (laughs) But they shot him into a tree. After that, no other herring would do it. (laughs) You're making this up. I am not. My grandfather told me that story. (laughs) Of course, he also used to call me by my sister's name. (laughs) And and sometimes he'd wear his underwear on the outside of his pants. (laughs) I guess he wasn't a very reliable source. Okay, Rebecca, that was pretty funny, right? That's so funny. She's hilarious. And it's hard to tell in the scene if the actors are actually laughing at her. I was or thinking that, too. I feel like they were really laughing, and they just kept it in they there. They got t- tickled yeah. in real life. Yeah. yeah. That and that was so some good, good writing, too. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we have writing like that anymore. Yeah. It's just, it's pretty classic. Yeah, that was really good. Um, <laughs> After Golden Gor- Girl- Girls? Girls? After Golden Girls in 92, she went on to star in, like, a series of shows. She was in the Golden Palace, which was a spinoff of Golden Girls, uh-huh. which I don't remember. I don't remember that. I don't remember that at all. Um, and that was all the Golden Girls except B. Arthur, oh, which was okay. the tall one. Yeah. 
Um, she was in a show called Bob and Maybe This Time, and she made cameos in shows like Ally McBeal and that 70s show. Uh-huh. Now, in 2010, she took on the role of Elka in Hot in Cleveland. And I don't remember this show, but Mm-mm. that show helped her, like, it kind of revived her career. Huh. Along with The Proposal. You remember that movie? I love that movie. <laughs> and she's so funny in that movie. With Sandra Bullock and yes, Ryan Reynolds. Yes. She's kind of the hippie grandma. Yes. She's yeah. so funny. Yes. <laughs> when she's in the forest singing. Yeah. And she's dressed in the little Indian warrior outfit or whatever and she's they're, wearing. Don't they dance around the yes. fire or something? Oh, yes. Yeah. It's so funny. So funny. Um, throughout her long career, she was nominated for 21 primetime Emmys and wow. she won five. Mm. Um, and she said the key to having a happy, long life, she said, is having a sense of humor. Just looking at the positive side and not dwelling on the downside. Yeah. It takes up too much energy being negative. Yeah. So that's one of the things that helped her live a long, yeah, successful life. That's true. They say it takes so much less energy to, like, smile than it does to frown. Well, yeah. it's like you use more muscles to frown, right? Uh-huh. I yeah. Think, yep. So I have a few more bullet points of her career okay. that I'm going to share with you. Some more fact, some factoids about her career. <laughs> um, her career lasted 79 years. Wow. She made her t- TV debut in 1939 after graduating high school, and she broke the Guinness World Record for the longest entertainment career for a woman. Wow. So that's pretty cool. I wonder what was the last thing she was in. Oh, gosh, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not did. sure. Um... She pre- she did predate sliced bread. The first commercial <laughs> bread slicing machine was created in 1928, wow. and that was five years after her, her birth. Oh my! Because <laughs> you hear that phrase all the all time. All the time, yeah. And mm-hmm. there's actually people that are older than sliced bread. <laughs> Not many left. Um, there's one time that she was on a show, the Betty White show, and she refused to remove a black dancer on her show. Oh wow! Because they were making a big deal about it, obviously. Um, she refused to remove him, and she instead gave him more airtime. Wow. So she kind of pushed back on the... She was ahead of her time in that. That's right. Uh-huh. She was telling them what was going to happen. Huh. Um, and her show, Life with Elizabeth, she was a producer of that show, which she became one of the first female producers of a TV show. Okay. In 1953. Huh. Um, she was the oldest person to host Saturday Night Live. Really? Yep. In 2010, she was the host with the musical guest, Jay-Z. Oh, all right. And she was 88 years old at the time. That's crazy. <laughs> um, Are we still going to be sitting here podcasting when we're 88 years old? I think so, probably. Sure. Yep. <laughs> we'll be in our wheelchairs. Just roll up to the table. <laughs> um, she's been nominated for an Emmy in six different decades. Oh, my goodness. She won, like I said, she won five times. Uh, she won five primetime Emmys, a daytime Emmy, and a Grammy for Best Spoken Word Recording. What? Yep. What is that? Like, it would be an album where you're just doing spoken word. I remember William Shatner used to do these all the time. Oh, gosh. You, like, speak songs or speak poems, and it's a spoken word thing. Do people turn these into albums? Yeah, I think they were popular in the 50s and 60s, not okay. so much anymore. I mean, there has been some spoken word stuff, current, you know, like, right? Like videos of, like, yeah. modern, yeah. So, huh. Interesting. pretty amazing life. Yeah, for sure. That Older really than cool. sliced bread. Older than sliced that's bread. That's one thing we'll never be able to say. I know, that's right. So, well, that was a good one. Rip. Yep. <laughs> Rip, Rip, thank Betty you, White. Betty White. <laughs> thank you, Betty White. <laughs> okay, Rebecca, are you ready for your next... Sure. January birthday. Sure. I almost yeah. knew you were going to do Betty White. So now I'm kind of this. I almost knew that was going to be and the clues. And so honestly, now here I go. that's I really know. what inspired me to do the whole episode is yeah. when Betty White passed. Yeah. It was like, oh, we got, let's talk about birthdays. Yeah. So, so now I'm basically just going to be guessing. Yeah. Now you're, you're, it's a shot in the dark now. Yeah. Lay it on me. That might be a clue. Is it? Maybe. Dun, dun, you dun. actually thought I'm wearing a Mavericks jersey today, and you thought that was a clue too, yeah. but it's not. You you look at everything. You see everything. <laughs> I try. Yeah. I need all the help I can get, honey. Okay, this one is January 11th. I'm not going to tell you the year yet. Okay, you ready for your three clues? Sure. 
This person was the star of one of the hottest shows on Broadway. Okay. Clue number one. Clue number two, they were born in the Caribbean. Caribbean. Which way do you say it? Caribbean. Caribbean? Okay. And number three, this person dabbled with poetry as a youth. So for 25 million points. Are you not going to give me the year yet? Not yet. What? Do you want the year? I Do you ha do have an audio clue or anything? I have an audio clue, but I was going to see if you could get it before I give you the audio clue for 25 million points. If you can get it before the audio clue. I got nothing. Nope. Hottest show on Broadway. Born in the Caribbean. And they dabbled in poetry as a youth. Okay, are you ready for your clue? I'm ready. Here we go. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Hey, yo, I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not throwing away my shot. I'm going to get a scholarship to King's College. I probably shouldn't brag or dag. I'm amazed and astonished. The problem is I got a lot of brains, but no polish. I got to holler just to be heard with every this. word. I drop you listen to it all the time. The rough, the shiny piece of coal, trying to reach my goal. My power of speech, unimpeachable. Only 19, but my okay. mind is older. Okay. You ready? Yeah, before. <laughs> it's Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton? <laughs> Are you sure? No. <laughs> it's <laughs> no. Lynn Manuel Miranda. Or is it Alexander Hamilton? It's not. Ale what? No. Hottish. No. It's Lynn Manuel Miranda. Are you sure? What? Yeah. Yes, I'm okay. sure. The answer, Rebecca, is Alexander Hamilton. You're kidding me. I am not. He's not born in the Caribbean? Yes, he was. What? Oh, yes. I watched all of Hamilton. I don't know that. That wasn't it in the play. About, <laughs> it talks about him coming from the Caribbean, I'm pretty what? sure. Yeah. I need to listen to the closed captions. Because he was born reading. in 1775 or 1777. We're not quite sure. We think they think maybe he lied about his age to get into college. Oh, because he didn't want to be he didn't want to be an older freshman. He wanted to be a younger freshman. Okay, so yeah, and he's okay. all about that that knowledge. That's right. He was born in the on the Caribbean island. I think I normally say Caribbean. I did not know of that. Nevis. Okay. His father was a Scottish trader named James Hamilton, and his mother was Rachel Fawcett. Okay. They weren't married at the time. Because there's a little problem that Rachel was still married to another man. Yikes. At the time of Alexander's birth. Yeah. But he let she uh, she left her husband after he spent much of her family fortune and had her in prison for adultery. So she's like, okay, I'm done. Wow. Um, unfortunately, Hamilton's father abandoned the family in 1766. Oh, my. And his mother died two years later. So he had a pretty rough yeah. go of it. Um, he was hired as a clerk in a trading company on St. Croix, Croix when he was only 11. Oh, my. So he started really young. Um, he gained wider attention. He wrote a letter about a hurricane that hit the island in 1772. So everyone was impressed with that. So they raised money to send him to America to study. And he arrived in New York in late 1772 Wow! to go to school. He studied at King's College, just like the yeah. clip said, which is now Columbia University. It is? Yeah. <gasps> That's so cool. <laughs> he began writing stuff for the, like, he was a very good writer, so he wrote yeah. stuff in favor of the revolution. And um, eventually he was commissioned to lead an artillery company in the Continental Army. And he fought bravely in the battles of Trenton and Princeton. Among other battles. Yeah. Um, by 1777, he had captured uh, George Washington's attention. So he got, he became, he got on his staff. Right. Became his aide de camp, which is like his second hand man, his left hand man. However you say it's that. It's called right hand man. Right hand man. Right -hand man. Left hand man. I think I say that because I left handed. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it should be called He's left hand need man. right hand man. It says it in the musical. Oh, does it? Mm -hmm. Um, so he married Elizabeth, what's her last name? Skyler. Skyler. And uh, she was the daughter of a they wealthy. They called her and Eliza. They called her Eliza. Uh -huh. um, 
She is the daughter of a wealthy and influential New York landowner Philip. and military officer. Philip Schuyler. So how many, okay, in, this, in the show, they talk about there's three sisters. Yes. But what did we learn on Sharon Says So? If you have not watched Sharon Says So, please. You need to watch, and her podcast is great, too. So she does good. stories. It's really good stuff. I mean, I might have met her the other day, but that's another story. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe the highlight of your week. It was definitely the highlight of my week. <laughs> Anyways, Except for being here. Her Instagram handle is at Sharon Says So. That's not her last name. That's like, she says so. It's Sharon uh, McMahon. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah. And her podcast is the same. Anyways, on her podcast, she did a whole podcast about the Schuyler family, Philip Schuyler and his wife. And they had 15 kids. 15. But eight of them died. So they yeah. had seven living children. Three of them were the sisters. And then there right. was some other one. Um, so pretty amazing. Yeah. They ended up having... Uh, Elizabeth and Alexander had eight children. Which I didn't realize that yeah. because in the Hamilton, he, they just have the one they just that dies. They have nice. the son. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's one of the big stories in the show. Yeah. Um, so Hamilton left his staff because he wanted to be back on. He wanted back then, like, to be in the war was like it was an honor and kind of where you got famous. Yeah. So he wanted to get back in the war. So he was leading a battalion, and he's one of the reasons, the battalion that he led is one of the reasons they won the Battle of Yorktown uh -huh. in Virginia, which was like the ma last major battle of the war. Yeah. So he helped win the war. Wow. Um, so after the war, he studied law, he passed the New York bar, and he set up a practice as an attorney in New York City. Next to Burr. Huh? Next to Burr. Yeah, we're going to get into Burr. Those two didn't get along. <laughs> Actually, Hamilton didn't really get along with anybody. Really? Like, he was, like, I think he was very outspoken, uh -huh. you would say. Yeah. Like, he let people know what he was thinking. Um, kind of a hothead, I would say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he was chosen as one of the delegates for the uh, Constitution, yeah. to write the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And... He did a, speaking of talking for a long time, he did a six-hour speech which, in which he was trying to convince everyone that we needed a strong central government. Yeah. And he drew criticism for that because he was so, he was so supportive of a central government that they thought he wanted a monarchy again, uh, like a king. Uh-huh. So he got in a little trouble for that. Huh. He wrote most, most of the Federalist Papers. Do you know what the Federalist, paper, Federalist Papers are? Yeah, they were written before the Constitution to help decide like how things were run, right? Right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, thanks. Another yeah. holiday high five. He wrote 51 though. of them, I think. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon Says So. No, that's Hamilton. That's Hamilton? Yes. That's just from Hamilton? Yes. <laughs> I thought you got that from Sharon. Wow, no, thank you, Lin-Manuel. He, write, he writes like he's running out of time. That's part of the whole thing. They're like, why do you write it like running out of time? And then he says that Hamilton wrote the other 51. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, those were used. It was trying to convince the population that we needed a new constitution. Mm -hmm. So the papers were written. So the guys didn't necessarily agree. Like, Jefferson and Madison didn't agree with Hamilton. They wanted a less centralized government. Right. So they didn't necessarily agree with the papers, but it was trying to convince the uh, the country, hey, we need we need something new here. Yeah. Um, he was appointed the first secretary of the U.S. Treasury, huh. and he pushed for a centralized bank called the First Bank of the United States, and that helped fuel economic growth for the young country. Yeah. So um, he had obviously had political disagreements with Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson, who was Secretary of State at the time, mm -hmm. it resulted in the first two political parties. It's because of these two guys that we have the first two political parties. Huh. The Federalists with Hamilton and the Democratic Republicans with Jefferson. Huh. And, of course, the Federalists wanted a really centralized government, and Jefferson and the Democratic Republicans wanted more states' rights. Let so the Democratic Republicans is now what we would call the Republicans. Yeah. And the Federalists isn't what now we would call the Democrats. Yeah. I, I mean, it's gone through different iterations, but kind of the philosophies are kind of... Kind of aligning-ish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then he got in some trouble. And I think this is in the show, too. Yeah. It's the Reynolds pamphlet that mm -hmm. he wrote mm -hmm. in 1797, which in it he went public with his affair with a married woman, Maria Reynolds. Mm hmm he wanted to clear his name from any suspicion of trying to financially swindle her husband, James. Yeah. So he went ahead and said, okay, this is what happened. Um, so basically that 
he was never going to win office after that. Like, he just had that stigma now. Yeah. So he never won an office after he uh, admitted that. Mm -hmm. Uh, He and his wife suffered even worse humiliation in 1801 when their son, Philip, Mm -hmm. was killed in a duel that he had entered to defend his father's name. And that's also in the Mm -hmm. Broadway show. Uh, Philip challenged George Eaker to a duel because Eaker was saying that uh, Alexander was a monarchist. Hmm. Doesn't seem like it. I don't know if you should get in a duel over that. <laughs> I don't either, but man, you know they what did I mean? it a lot. They, were they like, really did. You shamed my name. Time to. Yeah, like, let's go do this. Weapons. Let's go shoot each I'm other. Like, what? Because we complain about like politicians arguing now, but I don't see anybody going out back no. and having a duel. Not so. Mm-mm. Speaking of Hamilton and his combative personality, um, he was in frequent conflicts. And according to historian Johann Freeman, Hamilton was involved in no fewer than 10 affairs of honor, which were near duels, before the notorious 1804 duel with Aaron Burr that took his life. Yeah. So he was constantly kind of in scrapes. Huh. Um, Hamilton and Burr had been political opponents since they debated the Constitution back in 1789. Right. Burr then angered Hamilton because he ran against Hamilton's father-in-law in the Senate and won. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said, I fear Burr is unprincipled both as public and a private man. <laughs> they were, <laughs> we talk about like politicians digging on each other now, but they were so mean when they wrote yeah. back then. Yeah. I fear he is unprincipled both as a public and private man. <laughs> and I feel that it. I feel it a religious duty to oppose oppose his career. Wow. <laughs> so he made good on this in 1800 because when Jefferson and Burr tied in the presidential election, it came down to a vote of the Congress then. Uh-huh. And, of course, Hamilton wasn't in the Congress, but he swayed the Federalists in Congress to vote for Jefferson, even though he didn't like Jefferson either. Yeah. He just couldn't handle Burr being president. Yeah. <laughs> so it was because of that that Jefferson won the vote in Congress, became the president, and Burr became the vice president. So in 1804, Burr decided to run for governor of New York. And after he lost, which he lost for a bunch of different reasons, but he thought it was because of Hamilton again, because Hamilton had written a newspaper article about him, (laughs) and he thought that was the main reason he lost. So he's like, Alex, let's go finish this off. So he challenged him. He challenged him to a duel in 1804. They just couldn't live on the same earth together. That's right. Um, They met in New Jersey. Uh, Both men fired. Hamilton shot and missed. And some historians believe Hamilton didn't really want to hit Burr. I mean, it... I don't, how does the, do you remember how the show... Yeah, the show basically says aim aim high. He he aimed high so he wouldn't shoot him. Yeah. So, um, Burr's bullet, however mortally wounded Hamilton and he died a few days the next day of his injuries. Wow. So now we come to your favorite show ever, Hamilton. Yes. Because obviously centuries later we had the groundbreaking musical Hamilton. The performance written by and starring Lynn Manuel Miranda. Offered a new perspective on the Founding Fathers biography by marrying it with hip hop. Yeah. And it won That's an eleven why I Tonys. Like it. <laughs> It's history and hip-hop, your two favorite things. Yes, I am a closet hip-hop lover. I don't even know if it's really a closet situation, but I do love hip-hop. Okay, do you want some Hamilton Broadway facts? Sure. Okay. uh, Lynn wrote this on vacation in Mexico. (laughs) Um, He he read the biography of Hamilton that was written by Ron Chernow, Uh and he began to, you know, when I use... When I read a biography, I always think it could be a musical. Okay. So he started thinking this could be a musical. He, and here's what he said. It, I was like, this is an album. No, this is a show. How has no one done this? It was the fact that Hamilton wrote his way off the island where he grew up. That's the hip-hop narrative. Mm. Like he was using his writing to to better himself. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Lynn Googled Alexander Hamilton hip-hop musical. And he just totally expected that someone had already written this. But when he found out they didn't, he said, it's time to get to work. (laughs) Because he just, for him, it was just natural that this is a hip-hop show. Yeah. Um, 
So obviously, and he he really loved Les Mis, and he feels like both his show and Les Mis are very similar hmm. because um, it talks about the human experience, and after we fall down, it's about getting up and yeah. you know trying to do better. Um, it took him a full year to write the first song. And then another year to write the second song. What? Yep. Okay, can I be honest? Yeah. I have thought about this before. I what? have thought about, you know I like to write raps. You're a rapper from way back. I'm a rapper from You're way back. You're the OG. For real. And I have really, I really have thought, this was my thought. This sounds so thought? silly. I don't want to say it out loud. I'm going to say it. I have thought. Who's a famous person I could write a musical about? And the first thing that came to my mind was like Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. I don't know why. This has been a while. Okay. But like, she's got some interesting history. If there was a musical and then rap music about her, how cool would that be? Okay. You need to Google that and see if anybody's written it. Okay. I don't, I've never heard of it. Yeah, I just don't even know where to begin. So is it going to be a hip hop show about Marilyn Monroe? Yeah. Okay. I don't really know how that goes. But can you imagine a musical named Marilyn? Okay. That's cool, right? Yeah, do we need to copyright and trademark this? Yeah, right now. Okay. <laughs> Before the listening audience steals <laughs> it. <laughs> You've put it out there now. <laughs> hey, don't steal this. It's Rebecca's. Yeah, that's right. I think that's that's a legal enough that's it. claim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, the show packs in one hundred and forty four words per minute. That's a total count of 20,520 words. That is crazy. If Hamilton were sung at the pace of other Broadway shows, do you know how long it could take? How long? Up to six hours oh, to perform. It's wow. a lot of talking. Okay. Okay. I have tried. Like, the first time I watched Hamilton, I tried to watch it with the closed captions on. Yeah. You can't. You cannot read that fast and actually no see what's happening. How did so, they even keep up with them? So then I've actually listened to it and just read the lyrics i have watched it without the closed caption and i've watched it now with the closed caption like i'm i'm trying to watch get it all synchronized in my brain but it, it's too hard you can't do it when so people, percentage like, wise how much of the show do you think you've got down like memorized yeah oh not not very much 20 percent, 25 20 percent. 20%? hey that's not bad Maybe 20, yeah. Okay, you need to keep us updated on that. Whew. But then I have to start working on Marilyn. I don't have time to work <laughs> with Hamilton anymore. Well, you have a year to write your first Marilyn song I if you so. use the Lynn manuel uh, and outline. Then and then once you get this written and you're on an island, how do you get this pitched to anybody? What what happens there? Well, he was, for him, he was already on Broadway. He had written Into the well, Heights. Well, I'm not already on Broadway yet. Well, Lynn, if you're hearing this... <laughs> I'm sure Lynn. I'm sure Lynn is one of our listeners, so yeah, I need it in. We can just connect with him, and we'll get the ball rolling here. In three years, I'm gonna need it, need it in on Broadway. Hey, also in April, which we've probably talked about before, I'm going to see Hugh Jackman and the Music Man. You are. I'm sitting close enough, so yeah. I'll get his attention, yes. and then after the show, I'll talk to him about this. Shoot some kind of spitball at him. That has I don't know. All the that sounds dangerous. All the information. Yes. I'm just going to like wave to him and say, can I talk to you after? Oh, okay. That'll work. And then. Then you'll be arrested. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll be posted. Me and my, hopefully Texas. David can, David can bail me out I'll of New York jail. Places. Yeah. Maybe I'll meet one of the Reagans if I go to P one PP. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Meet Frank Reagan. Um, <laughs> that's from Blue Bloods, also by the way. Also Tom Selleck. Okay. I have a little special surprise for you. What? Okay. It's not Lynn Manuel in person, but I have this cool video that I found. And how long is how long is Hamilton? Oh God, almost three uh, hours, almost right? Three hours, yeah. Okay, what if I told you that Lynn Manuel did a video for the Ellen Show, in which he did Hamilton in three minutes? Oh my goodness! Would you be interested in seeing that? Yes, I have not already seen it. Okay, here we go. Hi, I'm Lin-Manuel Miranda, and this is Hamilton in three minutes, featuring presidential expert, Macy Hensley. <laughs> Alexander Hamilton gets to New York from the Caribbean. Terrible childhood, terrible childhood, how did he survive it? Uh, Alexander Hamilton, everyone says his name, and we start the show. He gets there and goes, you all have to listen to me, I'm really smart. I'm not throwing away my shot, I'm not throwing away my shot. Aaron Burr is like, uh, oh my god, this 
guys a lot. But his friends are like, this guy's awesome! And they all sing my shot with him. I know Aaron Burr, sir. Pardon me. Are you Aaron Burr, sir? That depends. Who's asking? Oh, sure, sir. I'm Alexander Hamilton. I'm at your service, sir. I've been looking for you. I'm getting nervous. Well, that was amazing. Give me a high five. Cut to the Skyler sisters downtown. We're looking for a mind at work, 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 work. Hey! Cut back to all the way across the sea, King George. You'll be back, soon you'll see. You'll remember you belong to me. Uh-oh, he's sending all these troops. And now we're in the Revolutionary War. 32,000 troops in New York Harbor. Cut to George Washington being like, oh my God, we're gonna lose. I'm running for my life. I need help. Alexander Hamilton says, you need me, right-hand man. Boom, but let's pause for love. Because Alexander Hamilton meets Eliza Hamilton. She sings, helpless. They get married. Mwah. We rewind. We see the whole story again from her sister's perspective. I liked him first, but she's, he's better for my sister. But I'm going to be really sad for the rest of my life. Satisfied, you'll never be satisfied. War, war, war. Alexander Hamilton's too much. He's very extra a lot of the time. Go home. They're going to have a baby. Come back to the war. Yorktown, they win. How much time do I have left? We win the war, King George. You're on your own. After the war, he goes back to New York. George Washington becomes president of the United States. Yay! Fun fact about George Washington from Macy. George Washington, when he died, he only had one row tooth left. Cut to nonstop. Nonstop, why do you assume you're the smartest in the room? Hamilton's like, let me be the treasury secretary. Let me do all this cool stuff. George Washington says, yes. Aaron Burr's like, I'm being very left behind. I want to be in the room where it happens, room where it happens. He runs for Senate against Hamilton's father-in-law. Thomas Jefferson was ambassador to France the whole time. So he comes home, he's like, oh, what did I miss? Cabinet battle, cabinet battle, cabinet battle. More animosity between Burr, Hamilton, Burr, Hamilton. Hamilton uh, does not become president, but all of his enemies do. John Adams, James Madison, Thomas Jefferson. Fun fact about Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson had two grizzly bears as pets. What were their names? I don't know. Me neither. History spoiler, Burr shoots Hamilton. We talk a lot about legacy. We make you cry a lot. The end. That was Hamilton in three minutes. That was so cool. Really cool. Did you like that? I loved it. Have you ever actually watched Hamilton? Yeah, we watched it. We watched the Disney Plus when it came out yeah, on there. You've watched the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Oh, I think it's really good. I loved that little snippet. And it's kind of cool because me being a history buff, he sticks pretty. He simplifies some things, but he's very meticulous in staying with. Yeah. The facts. Yeah. I'll, most I of love it. it. I mean, other than maybe, you know, willing down the sisters to three and not really talking about yeah. other brothers and sisters, but he really hits the facts. Right. And that's impressive. That's so cool. Okay. Are you ready for your final January birthday? No, I have to go work on my Maryland song. <laughs> well, let's finish quickly so you okay. can get that done. All right. All right. I'm ready. Let's do this in less than three minutes. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I got inspired by Lynn. <laughs> okay. This is our final birthday, January 3rd. Okay. I'm not going to give you the year yet. Your first clue is they real they really killed it in their Shakespearean roles. They really killed it in their Shakespearean roles. Okay. Number two, they are flipping Hollywood upside down. They are flipping Hollywood upside down. Why am I repeating myself? I don't know. <laughs> For dramatic purposes. I feel and like the you're third clue, to be like Chuck Woolery or something. Life life as a trained assassin suits them well. Okay. So for 12 points, can you get, with those three clues, get the January 3rd birthday? But you keep saying they. Is it only well, one person? I, well, I just can't say he or she, so I'm using they or them. Because if I say he or she, you'll know oh. it whittles it down. I'm trying to keep it open to who I it see. can be. They killed it in their Shakespearean roles. They're flipping Hollywood upside down. And life as a trained assassin suits them well. Can I you do it know. without the audio? Life as a trained assassin suits them well. Who's a trained assassin? Who is a trained assassin? I don't know. I'm going to need a clue. Do you need your audio clue? Sure. Okay, here we go. Kid Bishop. <laughs> Hi, Kid Bishop. I'm not here to ruin anything. I'm just going to kill Barton, have some appetizers, and then I'll go. I made macaroni if you want some. 
I'm sorry, what? Well, I was starving and you took forever, so I wanted to make food. Well, I hope you enjoyed the bruschetta because it looks like you already lost him. He's in the elevator. Okay, so who do you think that is? Can you give me the clues again now that I've heard that? You? They really killed it in their Shakespearean roles. They're flipping Hollywood upside down. And life as a trained assassin suits them well. Is it Hawkeye? What's his name? It's someone in Hawkeye. Is it the girl? Is it the is it the girl that's training to be Hawkeye? Or is it the Romanoff girl? I don't know. That's for you to decide. I don't know the girl that train it's training to be Hawkeye. I don't know her real name. Okay. And you said I would know. I don't know any of their real names. So which one is really a trained assassin though? Of oh. those two. Oh, the sister. Right. What is her name? Yelena. Yelena, that's right. Yelena Romanoff, right? That's what I'm going with. Is that your final answer? Sure, yes. Rebecca Hardy, you are correct. <laughs> that was a lot of help. <laughs> <laughs> it's her, the actress's name is actually Florence Pugh. Okay. Um, she was born in Oxford in 1996. Wow, she's so a baby. We, we went really younger on our last one here. Yeah, you did. Um, she made her acting debut in 2014 in a drama called The Falling. And she's most recently been in the Black Widow movie and Hawkeye. Huh. Um, she, gained re she gained recognition in 2016 for her leading role as a violent young bride in Lady Macbeth. So oh. that's where the Shakespearean clue came in. I didn't in. realize she was in Shakespeare. Yep. Her first couple of roles were Shakespeare. Huh. She won the British Independent Film Award, which is kind of like an Oscar for them. Yeah. Um, she starred in King Lear after that, which is another Shakespearean, and Outlaw King, which was on Netflix, I think, yeah. with Chris Pine. Oh, okay. Um, she was in a miniseries in Britain called The Little Drummer Girl, and she was nominated for the BAFTA, which is the British equivalent of the Oscars, mm -hmm. Rising Star Award. Huh. Award. Um, her breakthrough was in, I've never seen this, but it's Fighting With My Family. It's like that family of wrestlers. I think it was on Netflix, too. Oh, yeah. Um, she was also in the horror movie Midsummer, which we don't do horror movies. Yeah. But she was also Amy March in Little Women. Like the most recent movie? Yeah. Oh, okay. So she was nominated for an Oscar for that. What? Um, and what's cool is her grandmother used to read that story to her all the time. And both of them thought she should be Amy when she was a kid. They <laughs> yeah. were, they both enjoyed that character. Wow. So she always wanted to be Amy, and then she ended up getting nominated for an Oscar. Yeah. She suffered from trachomalagia as a kid, which is basically uh, where your windpipe yeah. collapses. Uh -huh. So they were in England, and after a bunch of hospitalizations, they decided to move to Spain for a while. They were hoping the dry air and all that would help her breathe better and all that. <laughs> So when she, That's so crazy. I know. Let's just move to Spain. Let's just move to Spain yeah. for the dryer. So for three years from, she was three when they moved there and they came back when she was six. Did it correct itself? It's it's one of those things that as you get older, it gets better. Oh, okay. So as she got older, it kind of corrected itself. Okay. And when she came back at six is when she was in her first play. She played Mary in a school nativity play. Huh. So that was her first play. Do you know how tall she is? She's short. Yeah. How I'm tall do you think she is? She's five two. She's five three. Oh, okay. Um, and she can sing. Didn't really? notice about her. Yeah, she no, sings. I thought she only killed things. <laughs> I know. She <laughs> sings cover songs on YouTube under the name Flossie Rose. What? And there's I found maybe ten or a dozen videos. Huh, that's so cool. Um But she doesn't naturally have a Russian accent, which she has. No, she's this. English. Yeah. So she she sounds Russian to me. She sure does. When I started and researching she looks her, Russian to me. I know when I started researching her, I'm like, she's English. Yeah. Didn't know. Um, her granny Pat, which she's really close to, um, is 84, and uh, Florence said, "My gran is so cool. She's really fit and healthy. She goes hiking all the time." <laughs> so here's some facts about Florence. She always keeps Yorkshire tea with her. So wherever she's on the road, she has Yorkshire tea. She's been in a relationship with Zach Braff since 2019. What? And he's a lot older. So I think he's like 19 or 20 years older. Wow. So there you go. Um, 
She's a big fan of tzatziki. Hold on, sorry. It's a dipper sauce, and yeah. it's what is it the called? Greek. I don't know. Yeah, it's the know. Greek. It's a Greek yeah. sauce. Tzatziki, I think. Tzatziki. Yeah. There you go. Um, I don't know Greek. It's, gr- it's, it's a Greek a to me. Yeah, it's it's a Greek sauce that's got. Yeah, like a it's cucumber. salted yogurt and cucumber dip. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I can't do that, even though I love cucumbers. Yeah. And her mentor is Emma Thompson. Huh. Um, also British. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. She's very self-aware, and she's she uh, knows that she has this really strange low voice. Um, and on her bio on Instagram, it says, actor with a weirdly low voice and a confusing laugh. <laughs> so she's kind of self-aware of That's so herself. cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. I'm going to go follow her on Instagram as soon as we're done with this podcast. So January 3rd, 1996. After I write that Marilyn song. Yeah, you got to get to work on that. <laughs> So we better wrap it up so you can get... Wrap it up. <laughs> Is that the first song? Maybe. Oh. No, that sounds like a finale to me. Okay. <laughs> wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get this thing started might be your first one. Yeah. So you've got a Broadway show, the next Broadway hit to write. That's so right. So we better... I'm going to get on it. Yep. Right now. So you did good, Rebecca. I kind of didn't, but I appreciate your vote of confidence because yeah. the last one was really hard. Yeah, I, I kind of I went deep with that one. Yeah, I, I gave you two that I thought were pretty self-explanatory, and then I went a little younger yeah, and, and I missed the obscure. second one, and then you really had to help me with the third one. But, anyways, it was very interesting and entertaining, yeah. and I do appreciate it. Yep. Thank you very much for sharing your knowledge with me once again. One day I'm going to come with all the facts. I'll surprise all of you. You've done that once or twice in our podcast history. Once or twice, but I got one yeah. brewing in my head right here. You do right now. Right now. Is it right next to the Maryland yep. Broadway show? It's right next to it. Okay. I can't wait. I'll bring it. Okay. <laughs> well, we hope you enjoyed this edition of This Month in History, birthday edition. We'll try to do this again another time, hopefully, because it was fun. Maybe next time okay. I'll come up with it. Okay. I always say that. And the I floor is yours. You got this, Rebecca. Anyways. Hardy party of five and a half, over and out. We'll see you next time. I dream of life without a monarchy. The unrest in France will lead to anarchy. Anarchy, how you say? I use all oh, anarchy. <laughs> when I fight, I make the other side panicky with my. Yo, I'm a tailor's apprentice, and I got chopped.